We've done a couple of videos here on the channel now about how I grade particular cameras when I encounter them as a colorist. If you haven't had a chance to check those out, I'm gonna give you a spoiler alert on those videos and on today's video, which is about how to grade black magic material. I don't have a fundamentally different approach that varies based on the camera that I am color grading. In fact, one of my main priorities when I'm setting up my project initially, getting ready to grade, is to put myself in a position that allows me to grade in what I call an image-centric fashion, as opposed to a camera-centric fashion. There is a lot of camera-centric color grading going around, a lot of camera-centric color grading advice given, and I really think grading in a camera-centric form comes at the expense of the strongest possible image. So the big banner for today, even more than how to grade black magic material, we're gonna take a look at that and look at some good principles for it. But the big banner today is not only how to grade black magic material, but how to grade, period, and how to grade in an image-centric rather than a camera-centric way. That's what we're gonna look at today inside of DaVinci Resolve. By the way, if you have not subscribed to this channel yet, definitely wanna encourage you to do so. We talk about topics like this, everything else under the sun that is uh, inside of the Resolve color page twice a week in uh, videos here on YouTube. And then we do a live Q&A every Friday where we go into more depth on the topics that we've been discussing that week. So lots of good content on color grading and on DaVinci Resolve. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you turn on your notifications so that you're in the loop on all this cool stuff that we're doing here on the channel. Let's dive into Resolve and talk about working with black magic material. So I've got a timeline of a couple of shots, very colorful shots. Nice shots to look at here in Resolve. And I've done a couple things right from the outset that I always do right from the outset when I'm color grading. The first thing is I've set up my overall color management. And we're gonna talk a bit more about color management today than I do in some other videos because color management is one of the kind of gotchas, one of the peculiarities of working with black, black magic material that we need to be uh, aware of and really think about uh, in a little bit more detail than we might need to with another camera. But just to cover the other things that I have done thus far in my process, I've also set up a template node graph here. There's nothing happening in these nodes currently, but it gives me a structure, a template to fill out as I'm going through and grading each shot individually, which we're gonna start to do in just a moment. But for uh, the time being, we have a challenge here. We have something that we need to figure out. You may have noticed if you've ever shot anything on a Blackmagic camera or ever tried to do a color space transform or do any kind of color management with Blackmagic material inside of DaVinci Resolve, there's a lot of options. There's like a lot of Blackmagic design color spaces and it's not that easy to know which color space a particular image or set of images was actually shot on. And in fact, there are so many of these color spaces that the person who shot the material may not even be able to tell you which color space they shot with, or even if you yourself shot the material, it's not that easy to go back and figure out, wait, which color space did I actually shoot? So when we set up our color management, that's kind of a blank that we need to fill in, unless we do know definitively, which there uh, you, you can do, but oftentimes we either have a little bit or a lot of uncertainty about what the actual camera color space that was used in camera was just because there are so darn many of them. So I wanna go into my project settings for a second here and talk about how I arrived at what we are looking at right now. So I have my stock color management settings, same settings that I always use for uh, color managing everything here uh, on the channel. We're in DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate, uh, sometimes called Resolve Color Management. It's a really good framework. And I've set my input color space to Black Magic Design Film Gen 1. Well, how did I know that that was the color space of this material? I didn't. Do you wanna know how I got here? Through a couple of educated guesses. My first guess, I'm gonna take you back to you right now. My first guess was Blackmagic Design Film Gen 5. Let's hit save. Okay, that's not crazy, but that's a little crunchy. That does not seem probable to me that a, an image processed just through color management would come through with this much contrast and this much saturation. So. I decided to start going back through and looking at my other options and sort of my confining parameters that are allowing me to be a little bit more focused than saying, well, let's just try every menu item in this list for our input color space. I know it's a black magic camera, so that's gonna help, right? I also know if I go in and I right click and I bypass my color management, I'm looking at a log image. 
This is definitely in some kind of log space. So those are the two parameters that I'm using to kind of narrow or focus my search a little bit. But to be honest with you, within that context, I evaluated every single Blackmagic design log curve that is available here within Resolve. It took me a minute, it took me probably 15 minutes the first time that I had to do this for this footage. But I want to emphasize, even though it can be kind of frustrating to do that, and you might sit there as you're going through that process going, gosh, there must be a better way to do this. In the case of black magic footage, sometimes there isn't. And even if you do have to spend that 15 minutes, it's worth it. Spent, put on a song that you like, flip through and find the best possible starting position. It's going to pay off for literally the rest of your grade. So through that process for myself, I'm basically uh, looking at anything that says film, that's shorthand for log when you're talking about black magic design. So if you've got a black magic uh, source or something that came from a black magic camera, if you flip off your color management and you see that the image is indeed in some kind of log state, what you're gonna do is ideally audition every color space that has the word film in it. And that's several, there's probably six, seven, eight, or nine of those here in these input color space options, just go through and audition them and look for the one that gives, gives you the best possible starting point. That's of course, if you don't definitively know the color space, or if you can't find out from the person who shot the image, or if you yourself uh, didn't shoot the image and actually know what the color space is, that would be a best case scenario. If you don't, you're going to have to go through and do some detective work. That's what I did here. And it's time well spent, even if it's a little bit frustrating to have to spend that extra 15 minutes in your setup. Okay. It's a big uh, part of the process for black magic footage, because when you get this right, you're in a really good starting position for your material. When you get it wrong, the struggle is it may not feel like that big of a deal, but you are going to be paying for getting it wrong with every single shot in the timeline. In the case of this timeline, maybe that's not the end of the world. It's only eight shots. If you've got 20, if you've got 30, if you've got 50 shots and you don't have all the time in the world, we never have all the time in the world as colorists. It's a problem that is going to repeat itself for you with every new shot. That's no fun. That's not something we want to do. So it's worth that extra time up front. By going through that process for myself, I have landed on Blackmagic Design Film Gen 1 as a really good fit for these images. Let's go back uh, and hit save once more. There we go. And what I want to do now before I actually begin grading is I'm first of all going to uh, disable my bypass color management option that I had a moment ago. And there's one more thing that I'm always going to do at the beginning of a grading project before I begin looking at individual shots, and that's to get an overall look in place. I'm going to do that here at the timeline level of my node graph. And you can see here at the timeline level of the node graph, I've already pre-selected a look from my Voyager LUT pack, specifically from the essential set, which is 17 really versatile, completely self-contained looks that you can flip through an audition and find what best supports your creative intent. That's exactly what I did. I landed on this look called Omega that's doing stuff that I absolutely love to this image. Love how it's popping the colors and the contrast and making the images just feel like they're in that much better of a starting point before I begin grading. So that's a theme that's emerging here for this black magic material that comes out uh, in any conversation that I have about color grading and the best way to go about it. You wanna give yourself the best possible foundation. Better foundation means you can go further when you are color grading. So with these things in place, few of which are unique to Blackmagic uh, cameras, most of which are common to my grading process and are the same things that I do when I'm grading any material. With these things in place, the process is going to be very, very similar with Blackmagic as with any other camera that I might be grading. So at this point, now that I'm here at the clip level of my node graph, I'm in the DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate Color Space because that's how my color management is set up to work for me. I'm using my same template node tree that I always use. I'm going to use the same tools within this template node tree that I always use. So my feel, my relationship with this image is really not defined by the camera at all by the time I get into grading shot by shot. Does that make sense when I say that? So I'm just gonna simply go through and start adjusting things like my exposure and my contrast ratio using my contrast pivot and my overall balance using offset as well. The balance was actually looking great right where we initially were, but I'll usually just kind of move the uh, trackball around a little bit and see if I can't get any better of an image by doing so. I like that little nudge that I'm making here and I'm really happy with that image, I'm done. Here on shot number two, compared to where we were before, this feels nice being a little more open, but if I wanna kind of line things up to where we were, I'm just gonna trim exposure in a little bit and then go to ratio 
and maybe add a hair of contrast as well. And then go over to my balance node and make that same sort of just sweep and see if I can't get a slightly better looking image uh, by moving that balance trackball. And what I'm doing when I work my balance here is I'm really trying to optimize two things. Number one, skin tone. Make the skin tone look awesome. Optimize the skin tone. If there is skin in the frame, it is generally the most important thing in the frame. It's what we want to prioritize when we're balancing. Forget about highlights, forget about shadows. Those things are going to take care of themselves. Worry about your subject, worry about the skin. The other thing that I'm doing as sort of a second priority to getting skin tone in an optimal position is I'm trying to max out color separation, color contrast, just simply because the cheapest place for me to do that is here in this balance node. So if I can do as much of that as possible here, that's that much less of it that I will need to do elsewhere if I find that that's what I want to do. So those are good two good guidelines to keep in mind when you're talking about balance. Again, whether you're getting black magic footage or anything else. Let's take a look at a few more shots here. This is looking great. This looks great as well. Maybe trim exposure in a little bit. And I'm going to go so on and so forth through this entire timeline. By the time we end up on one of these reverse shots, I think where exposure will be a little bit more under. Maybe that's fine to let it drop, or maybe I want to open up a little bit and then compensate by adding a pinch of contrast in the low end, like so. But I hope you can tell by this point, this process is just the process that I always use. It has really nothing to do with black magic. And I hope this gives you a, a sort of like tangible example of what we started our conversation with today, that when we are color grading, one of the best things that we can do for our color grading practice is to move away from a camera centric approach and move into an image centric approach where we are setting things up in such a way that by the time we are hands on the wheel, grading the images, trying to optimize the reproduction for our creative intent and for what the image wants and needs, we are focused on that image exclusively and we really are not thinking about how that image was captured or what it was captured on. So I hope you enjoyed that walkthrough. This is uh, a subject that we've really only scratched the surface of how to grade a particular camera and the principles of image centric versus uh, camera centric grading. It's something that we're going to talk more about uh, in my next live session, the Q&A grade school that we do on Fridays. So if you want to go deeper, if you have additional questions, definitely encourage you to join there. And if you're enjoying this content, if you're liking learning more about color grading inside of DaVinci Resolve, definitely encourage you to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you are in the loop for all the cool stuff that we're doing here on the channel.